Okay, ciao Mauro. Uh, uh, thank you for being on my uh, on my YouTube channel or wherever I wherever else I put this. I'm very happy that you dressed up as I do. You know, it was an accident. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, by accident. Happy accident. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like I always wear a beanie and uh, I button up my shirt when it's 35 degrees Celsius here. Yeah, <laughs> and um, you're in LA. Yeah, what what time is it in LA now? It's uh, seven in the morning. Ah, okay. okay good. So, anyway, uh, so you look you look a little bit like Jacques Cousteau, I have to say. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah, uh, like, was a was a, was a great man. We don't have the same passion for the ocean, right. uh, but uh, yeah. we have the same passion for like exploring. Yeah, yeah. So, anyway, um, you. You are in JibJab, you're a head of content in JibJab. That's a creative company that makes, um, how do you say, cards, e-cards, that people can send to each other and have fun. So, so yeah. you manage all the content there, yeah. That's correct. Yes, yes, I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm in, uh, I'm in charge of the, you know, creative department. And uh, yeah, it's a very fun, you know, like job for a very funny company. Um, yeah. And uh, it, it really aligned with what I want to do in life, which is like create positive content that make, makes people, you know, happy or happier. Mm -hmm. uh, and Jeep Job, mm -hmm. basically the, the core of, of their business is like making people happy, so. I mean, okay, that's, that's cool. That's well, I was just, I was just testing it. I was just testing it um, a second ago, and uh, and I was immediately laughing just, just by uploading my, my photo, you know, but uh, and putting. I didn't even finish the animation, but it was funny. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I, I feel like, as, especially in this moment of like pandemic and uh, isolation and lockdown, uh, Jibja provides you know, that kind of like, uh, you know, positive content that you can share with the people that you love, but that you cannot, you know, meet in person. So we have created a lot of like quarantine um, content that people can share, like, you know, birthdays, you know, a lot of people, especially here in the mm -hmm. US where like most states are in, still in lockdown, you don't go to restaurants or like to friends' homes to, you know, celebrate a birthday. So Jeep Job has become that, you know, bridge between, you know, people that want to celebrate an event. Hmm. Okay, that's cool. And just to go through all your projects, because you have like a lot of interesting projects. So you also have the Happy Broadcast, which is an Instagram account you started yourself. Yeah, uh, where you put your illustrations. You're a, you're one of the top Italian illustrators, and uh, I don't know. Are you are you a top American illustrator? Are you famous in America as much? As I don't even know if I'm a top Italian illustrator, but I mean, I I'm a seasoned illustrator. I've I've been illustrating for many years, so yeah, I have. Yeah. Let's say I have a lot of experience in that field. Yeah, for me, you are a top Italian and top American illustrator. Well, thank you so much. So. Uh, so, and you started the Instagram account, uh, the Happy Broadcast, and it reached, I think I just checked, like uh, half a million subscribers, where every day you post something that makes people happy and makes them feel more positive about the world. Yes. So how did that, you know, how, how did you get that idea? What did you do? Just like one day, let me start, and then you just kept on going and it grew. Um, I feel the idea started from, you know, uh, knowing that, you know, anxiety uh, or anxiety disorder, you know, how you want to call it, but it's the most prevalent, you know, mental health uh, disorder in the world. But not a lot of people mm -hmm. talks about it because, uh, you know, our society uh, is, is built upon the, you know, get over it, you know, or like, yeah. You know, uh, it's, it's, it's just like a mental thing. So not a lot of people, you know, understand the, you know, seriousness of like such, you know, disease. Uh, and, um, 
I'm an anxious person, you know, so I started to basically pinpoint all the things that were giving me anxiety. And in my top three, there was like news, you know. Um, <laughs> so we live in this, uh, we live in this world of like constant push notifications, you know, it's like, um, no matter where you look at your phone, your, your computer, TV, every screen is constantly pushing, um, you know, information and yeah, most of this stuff, information. Yeah. 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 <laughs> most of the information that is pushed, uh, talks about problems and very seldom talks about solutions. So, <laughs> with the happy broadcast, again, I'm not like an influencer, a journalist or, but I, I just wanted to merge the passion for like art and illustration with like providing some positivity in people's life. And so mm -hmm. I started to put the two together and in a format that is very specific for that medium. So social media, mm -hmm. it's like a bite-sized news, uh, a vibrant color, very simple, minimal illustration. And that's how the project was born. Well, I have to say that it works. I mean, it really does work. It's very positive. I mean, every time I see it, it does remind me, okay, so it's not all, I mean, in general, I'm a, I'm a very low neurotic person. I'm positive, objective, and it still even affects me. So I don't think it's only for people who have anxiety or neuroticism that's high. I think it's, uh, I think in general, it's just like a, like a nice thing, you know, and I do consider it in my mind, it's like equivalent to CNN, because for me as a customer, as someone looking at stuff, and I, I uninstalled CNN because it's, a, it's rubbish, you know, and Breitbart and all this other stuff. And I, I started, I mean, I follow you, I, I consider it a source of news, you know, I don't consider it as a joke, you know, I don't see why news wouldn't Oh, yeah, I mean, ag again, uh, every news that I report, uh, like I said before, I'm not a journalist, so I'm not doing any kind of like uh, investigation or like report. So I just find and surface the news that are already there, but are like pushed down by, by all the negative news, you know, like negative news, yeah. uh, uh, using the metaphor of a, of a physical newspaper, negative news uh, are always on like page one. They always are yeah, yeah. on the on the cover of of the magazine. Like positive news are always are often like you know page seven, eight, nine, ten. So what I do is just I yeah. take these news, uh, I give them like a nice you know, illus I mean artistic uh, you know representation, uh, and uh, I just share them with uh, with the audience. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, I mean, just to tell you, because I, I, I know a little bit, I'm not an editor or journalist, but as far as I know, I can tell you that you, that's what 99% of journalists do. I mean, they don't do investigations and reporting. They, or they don't work so much on original content. They, they do a lot of what, what just comes through, through services like Reuters or whatever, you know, it's basically copy pasting. So yeah, or social media. Thousands. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're just copy pasting, you know, it's just, it's not really, not really so. So, I mean, I wouldn't put it down in terms of journalism. I mean, that's it. I mean, you know, there, there are so many articles out there that are considered journalism that have less sentences and they don't have original, I mean, you at least have an original illustration or something. So that's it. So, I mean, what's the next step for the happy broadcast? Um, well, I mean, I, w I'd like to say that, you know, the happy broadcast was created first for me. So to make me feel better about the world uh, and, and, and basically reduce my news uh, induced anxiety. Um, but, you know, the audience grew and, and we did uh, like also the responsibility of like catering, like positivity to a larger audience is like, something that I like to do. I mean, I got like a lot of messages of people that are very thankful for, especially in this moment, uh, having like, um, you know, like a profile, uh, a project that like push this kind of like positivity. So 
my idea is like the, uh, I think in a couple of weeks the books the book will be out uh, you know um, so I don't know if you cool. see it but congratulations awesome yeah. yeah so there will be there will be a book uh, out uh, that uh, has a little bit of the existing content but also a lot of like you know practical content to be more positive uh, but not just positive but also to do something to make sure that we're part of a positive change uh, to be more yeah. kind uh, not just to the people but to the animal to the planet and all of that uh, um, but the idea in the future is like hopefully to expand the team or like well there's no expanding the team there's no team right now i'm the team but you know to yeah. have more people to join this project in order to create something that, you know, is really multimedia. Um, and I can really start to create some editorial content, some original content um, on, uh, um, based on, you know, the mission of the happy broadcast. So uh, I, I don't have like a clear idea, but I know where I want to yeah. go, but I'm not in a hurry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but I mean, you're, for example, that book is, uh, is treating the happy broadcast as if it's a, a, a single project. But I, as I told you, I see happy, the happy broadcast, I see it as, as equivalent to CNN. You know, so meaning, are you going to go, are you going to take a path of, okay, this is my project, design, illustration, art project, or are you going to take the path of, like, I'm going to translate this to different languages. I'm going to, yeah, have much more news. I'm no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. No, absolutely. I mean, I'm a big believer in like growth, you know. So I'm uh, I, I've never been uh, a big fan of like, oh, this is like a niche project that you know. I believe that if a project has like enough steam to grow, I mean, I have to pursue mm -hmm. that growth. So yes, I mean, yeah. as of now, I'm working uh, on a. Happy broadcast in Spanish. So it will be just a mirror yeah. of the happy broadcast in English, but in like Spanish. And yes, I mean, the, the idea is to build a brand that will be recognizable by people in terms of like, oh, that's a destination for like positivity. So, I mean, I hate to use the word like media company because I mean, this is not the best moment for media well, companies, but uh, it, it, the idea is to grow it into like a brand of happiness. Let me put it that way. So like yeah, something that yeah. can be recognized. But you can syndicate it, you know, easily. Yeah, I yeah, think yeah. That you can sell it to, to, to many, you know, so you can propagate it that way. I mean, it can become really big if it's syndicated. No, and, no, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, maybe um, having a... You know, I was saying that I maybe already having a TV have... Show or something. Or, I already have like little pieces of like syndication, like um, I'm in these, um, mm -hmm. so, I mean, I don't go to malls in the United States, but you know, this company that basically has like uh, hundreds of thousands of like uh, screens uh, inside like malls uh, in the States, uh, had the happy broadcast in, in, in heavy rotation in there. So if you're walking through the mall, you oh, okay, can cool. see the news. Uh, so, I, I've already started to explore these kind of opportunities, but uh, as of now, my biggest priority is like to, you know, consolidate uh, the, the the brand, not just as a provider of like these like little, you know, news, uh, but also content. I mean, if you look at the profile, you can see that there are like guides to feel less mm -hmm. anxious, to help the planet, to being aware of things like doom scrolling and stuff like that. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, I saw those. Yeah, doom scrolling. Yeah. So um, another thing, uh, you, I don't know if I understood you correctly when we had that coffee in LA recently. Are you, yeah. are you in some way related to the, to the egg project on Instagram, to the world record egg? Um, I'm not like a, a founder or a creator of the project, but yes, uh -huh. I've been working with them, uh, uh -huh. basically, uh, on, so I created like the, the character, so they had the egg already, mm -hmm. but I gave the character like uh -huh. life, meaning like I designed oh, okay, the, cool. the face, uh, 
the the uh, how how this egg looks uh, and i created like uh, oh, okay. uh tens of oh, like okay, different cool. animations and illustrations so i just want to explain this project to people because uh uh the, you know the, who was who was bragging i think kylie kardashian was bragging or or one of the kardashians was bragging how they had the the most liked instagram image you know instagram yeah. post and then uh the, i think this guy chris godfrey i guess you know him he just posted an image of an egg you know and, and then organized you know promoted it i don't know how i liked it as well so everybody likes the egg so the egg has more likes than the than the Kardashian. Yeah. So just so we don't have the, it's kind of a I don't know if it's anti Kardashian. I don't have no mind Kardashians, but it was interesting. Yeah. No, I think it was just a just a stunt. You know, uh, it was just yeah, like yeah. let's uh, let's make these like photo of of an egg uh, the most liked photo on Instagram, and and yeah. and they made it, but. Uh, the amazing thing that they did, and that's why I love the project and I wanted to work with them, uh, uh, is that they could have sold out uh, the, 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 the project uh, in, in terms of like, uh, okay, we're going to have like the sponsorship with the biggest brands on the planet, but instead they decided to use mm -hmm. it uh, like the Happy Broadcast, you know, to talk uh, about mental health. Um, so, mm -hmm. you know, they yeah, had this big that, yeah. reveal during the Super Bowl uh, about, you know, the crack in the egg uh, and, and, and give basically a voice to the egg. Mm, cool. Okay, so, um, you know, you're talking about projects that seem very intuitive, you know, and, and you work at a company where, I mean, there is a lot of data I mean, I'm guessing JibJab has to look at a lot of data, you know. And yeah, yeah, data. of course, yeah. It's a, it's a company that depends on visits. So, you know, let's say that I have this, this very casual terminology that I just use colloquially, you know, like the design, there are two types of design, you know, just there is an accounting type of design, which you go by numbers, you can measure if people like it or not, you know, if people can go through the door and stuff like that. Everybody can do that type of design. It's basically an accountant's design. With all the respect to accountants, but it doesn't require much of intuition, you know, or any intuition. And on the other side, meaning you can have a method for it. On the other side, you have this intuitive design, which is, you don't know where it comes from. The idea is a black box. It comes from God knows where, nobody knows. And it's, it's you know, maybe all the people can do it, but they don't, you know. So what do you think about this, this division and, and how much, you know, uh, are they in conflict or... Do they work together? I think that they can work together. I mean, again, like you were saying, like intuitive design is like invisible. So it's not something that, you know, it's like getting the user to click on a button uh, without wasting time, you know, like yeah. in a split second, the, the user uh, is not guided through like uh, scroll down, tap here, move there, but instinctively knows where to tap. So yeah. I feel like that there should be an accounting, uh, you know, like uh, um, approach uh, to design, meaning that you need to know a specific set of rules. Mm -hmm. uh, but then there is like the, you know, uh, intuitive part, uh, which is like, you know, knowing uh, how to guide uh, uh, user behavior without forcing it so mm. which is a little bit of like uh you know magic you yeah. know it's like uh it's like knowing your users uh, because again i feel like intuitive design is not like you know um one you know size fits all because if if your business is like selling shoes uh, is different than like jeep job like selling subscriptions if your business yeah. is like i mean and in and, and this kind of intuitive approach uh, has to be tailored to the specific user that comes to your yeah. uh business so but, that's why i'm saying that the accounting works for all it's like yeah. okay the logo goes there this goes here you know you have the big promotional image uh, but uh that's not intuitive yeah 
And do you think that accounting design can exist without the, the intuitive part? Or vice versa? Meaning a company yes, just doing so. accounting design, can it survive? Uh, I think so, yes. Depending on, the, depending on the business. I feel like that some businesses, they don't need the uh, intu in, intuitivity in their design, uh, you know. Um, but I feel like intuitive design is especially interesting and important uh, when you're like selling things, you know, when you have to, yeah. you know, basically go from like watching a product to buying a product in the shortest uh, time possible without like unnecessary steps. To me, like an accounting approach uh, is like if you're offering maybe like a or you're describing your services and you have a big button at top that is like call us or like send us an email. I mean, in that case, in yes. my opinion, you don't need like um, an intuitive approach. Yeah, and uh, so so the the way I'm thinking, I mean, what kind of business do you think it doesn't need? You know, like a bank or uh, I don't know, military or. Who, who do you think, which kind of a business doesn't need any intuitive, any cre creative, highly creative design? Uh, I wouldn't say a bank because I feel like that banks today is, uh, are positioned in a way that they really need intuitive design because they offer so many services yeah. uh, and so yeah. many need to be creative. of these like, yes, they, I mean, if you see like, uh, uh, like my bank in the United States is like Chase and I'm not saying that they have the best uh, approach to design, but they constantly update and redesign their experience because when you think about mm -hmm. it, I mean, we visit our bank website way more than we visit like an online store. You know, we, most of mm -hmm. the time you go there every day to see your like, transaction, to do a wire transfer to check your like stocks, uh, whatever is the reason, mm -hmm. you go there often and you want to reach these like points in the fastest way possible. Mm -hmm. So to me, like, uh, again, intuitive design is specifically for this, you know, driving the mm -hmm. user to where you want him to be in the fastest way possible. So, but there might be businesses uh, where, like I was saying before, you know, you have one access point which in most cases is like contact us or like send us a message and in that case uh, i don't think that you need to tailor an intuitive experience to that specific destination yeah yeah yeah, yeah. you're talking about the interface design but i'm talking about the entire business yeah you know? so you know like jib jab jib jab depends on intuitive design like they they have something they cannot measure which is in you and other people in jib jab and if you leave, then JibJab is gonna, you know, have trouble. Is that correct? Meaning that just like in a rock band, if you lose a top, if you lose a singer, you know, that's an intuitive creative business. No, yeah, I in mean, a, in an accounting. I, I agree. I agree. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I believe uh, in the quality and the skills of like individuals because they can make like a company like amazing um the same way it is in sport i mean if you look at the chicago bulls of the 90s i mean you can pinpoint like three four five amazing athletes that made that team great uh i think uh, but i also think that i mean if i uh, leave jeep job or if they fire me yes there will be a period where they have to rebuild uh, that knowledge and maybe find another person but um but yeah. but but I I mean I agree with you. I mean I was just saying that in my creative uh, um, approach, uh, intuitive design is mostly the user you know interface and user experience. But I agree that uh, you know also the business what what's what's behind uh, what you see is like very uh, important and should follow the same approach. And and uh, how do you how do you create you know because creation for you is let's say easy in a sense that you can finish something in an hour it's already accessible to to someone else you know like for me my creativity takes I mean sometimes I can write that's why I like poetry or I can create an image but the the core of my creativity takes three four years you know that's what I exist I exist to do things that take four 
years or five years and a lot of money. That's what I chose, just like a film director or, or someone that they need so much time to make, you know, while you, you are able to make something much faster. And uh, I know people who take a month, you know, and stuff like that, much less money, depending what they chose in their life as a designer, as a creator. So um, what is your process of creation? You know, how, how does it look like? Yeah. How do you go um, into this, you know? how, do you, how do you start the black box? I mean, my, um, you know, I'm a, I'm a very creative person. So I feel like I was born with this gene of creativity. So cre being creative comes natural to me. And, uh, but creativity is a muscle that you have to train. You know, if you don't, don't train creativity, especially when you're like a businessman and not just an artist. I mean, if you're doing art for yourself, uh, you basically create at your own pace. When you're like a creative person in business, uh, you cannot have your own pace. You know, the, 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 the pace that you should follow is what is like imposed by a client uh, or a project. So if you look at the happy broadcast, I know that I have to create uh, on a set, uh, you know, schedule. So I cannot, yeah. uh, you know, waste time or indulge, uh, you know, too much in details. Uh, when I create for JeepJob, uh, I know JeepJob is a sub subscription company that sells content to users. And because it's a subscription, it provides content on a regular basis. So even in that case, it's even more challenging because you, like you were saying before, JeepJob is a data driven company. So I have to analyze the data see what works, uh, what sticks, uh, uh, what, what's happening right now and create content that is catered cater specific to that user. So I feel like that in 20 plus year of creative career, what I've done is like, you know, cut the bullshit and just like focus on the core of creativity, which is the idea. I don't care about the style, mm -hmm. never cared about the style. I just care about the idea because the idea is the nucleus of like creativity, in my opinion. Ideas will always be relevant, even in like a hundred years. A good idea is a good idea. Style, I'm not interested in it because maybe 20 years from now, what is like cool today is not going to be cool. It's going to look, you know, old yeah. and uh, uh, non non relevant. So, yeah. Yeah. So how would you define that idea? What's that? How would you define it? Can you define it at all? I, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I mean, again, um, I feel like I was saying before, I feel like the creativity is like something that you, you have to have you know, you're born with it or not. I mean, you can go to school, you can study creativity, you can learn how to be more efficient, but you have, you either have it or not. It's like being a great soccer player, like being Messi, being Ronaldo. I mean, no, yes. No, what, what, I, what, what I meant is that, that core thing, you know, because I also have it. For me, it's, it's very complex. It's kind of a, some, uh, uh, layman's combination of philosophy and something else I don't know and then on top of that I start building you know and because it takes me a long time to build for example I'm, I'm building now a social media for innovation which has the same ambition as yours and then of course there are integral ideas there are essential ideas like two three ideas like mottos or whatever that I first had to test if I really believe in this yeah so I really believe in this. Otherwise, I, I, I wouldn't be able to survive. I would get bored or, or quit in a month. So I really need to believe in this so I can sustain. And my team needs to believe in this. I need to communicate them. And then we can start building around, you know. So that's why I'm interested in this idea. And, and, uh, and you have also these ideas like happiness, you know, is a good thing. Focus on positive, simplicity. I mean, every yeah. time I see your illustrations, you know, there is like, in a nanosecond, you are able to, to transfer the idea, you know, you're like a, like a Spartan illustrator, you know, with so little words and so little imagery, you communicate so much, you know, and I think that's very powerful. So that's why I'm asking if you have a definition of this idea, maybe you have a name or something, but 
no yeah. no but but it, i was i was trying to get there saying that you know it's like ideas are so subjective uh, you know they you know my ideas comes from i i don't know maybe my childhood the thing that i was exposed as a kid uh, my life experiences so i mean i i honestly don't know i mean plato was talking about like uh you know the the philosopher was talking about this world of ideas that resides over us uh, and mm -hmm. you can grab ideas from it uh, but uh i guess that i can access that specific you know area and grab something uh because i've been self you know trained to do that but i i don't have a i don't have a definition it's just like you know mm -hmm. it's just like you know how many times you're watching a movie uh, or watching like the work of an artist and say, oh my God, I wish I did it, you know, because when you see it, you're like, oh, that's, that was in front of my eyes. How come I didn't come up with that idea? It is mm -hmm. specifically that, you know, like everyone can access that idea in a different time, in a different way. Yeah. And, but I don't and, have a definition of it. Yeah. And when is the first time you, you, you figured out that this is who you are? Because I spoke a few days ago with a, with a coach and he focuses a lot on creativity and he's telling people that, you know, you're creative, you know, and a lot of people don't know that. And I was lucky that I had, uh, you know, like this artist Milkos told me I'm an artist, so I became an artist. And, uh, you know, kind of someone needs to maybe tell you or you need to have this like, who you are this, and then your life starts to go in that direction in a way, you know. So uh, when did that happen for you? Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, it. I feel like it started when I was a kid, you know, I've always loved uh, drawing. Uh, um, and I was very fascinated by TV commercials. So when I was a kid, <laughs> I was like, Oh, my God, you know, that's, that's my dream job. And I've you were worked thinking, many. You were years, thinking, so like, okay, when is this cartoon? You were thinking, when is this cartoon gonna finish so I can watch the ads? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I love the cartoons and I will love the ads. So for me, it was like a continuous like love for television. You know, both my parents were working, so I was spending most of my time, you know, watching TV and like drawing what I saw. But the I the, I feel like that the moment I realized that you know, you know for me, creativity wasn't just drawing. I, I never wanted to be an artist and I still don't want to be an artist. I mean, I want to use art or creativity to build uh, businesses and brands and projects. So yeah. I guess it's like a hybrid, uh, uh, it's like a hybrid approach to it. But um, I mean, I feel like that everyone is creative in its own way. So yeah, creativity course, yeah. is the key Creativity is the key that will help us, you know, basically solve all the issues because creative thinking is what, you know, is at the, at the, is the foundation of like problem solving. It's like solving problems in a way that it's not the accounting way. Yeah. It's not, there are like set of rules. If you break these rules, you're a creative person. So creativity is not just like an illustration or creativity is like in everything is like from cooking, uh, to you know Making like sandwiches. even problem solving so yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 absolutely and i just had a great question then you said the uh, cooking and then my brain went to food and, <laughs> and i forgot let's see if i can if i can remember the question it was a really really good <laughs> question i was like wow this is a really great question for him but then but then it escaped me I, this is so annoying this thing i know i cannot i cannot remember you know, I cannot remember what was the question about. Uh, uh, I cannot remember. It's okay. It's under the pressure. Problem so, solving. Uh, yeah, I remember. I remember now. So, if see. the happy pro, if the happy broadcast, it was not that I something else. If happy broadcast starts growing, are you willing to to give it to someone who can make it bigger? Because you seem like a person, like most creative people, who want to do hundred things. And the happy broadcast for it to go from half a million is now, maybe you can bring it to one, two, three, five million. But if you want to affect a billion people, you need to give it to someone else who has that, you know, 
mentality to stick to one project and to focus on 90% accounting, you know, solving efficiency issues while the 10% the remains creativity. How do you, is that something? Uh, that yes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, again, you know, back in the days I had this agency in Milan and it was like a boutique agency and, you know, uh, but we, me and my business partner, we got to a point where we were like, if we want to grow like way more than we are growing right now, we have to sell, you know, yeah. we have to find a partner that will take the agency to the next level and whether that happened or not is not important. But uh, it's the same thing for the happy broadcast. I know that as of now, I'm the jack of all trades. I'm the one man band, the, you know, the only person that works on the happy broadcast. And it's already a miracle that the project is where it is right now. But a hundred percent, I mean, probably very soon I'll have to raise money uh, if I want to expand it into like a bigger project have like a like I was saying like a little editorial team or someone to help me so you know better than me that if you raise money someone is going to come in and take like a a chunk of yeah. equity uh so yeah I I don't the mission of bringing positivity is bigger than my ego of saying oh this is me this is all yeah. me you know yeah. I really believe in these you know uh projects you have to so let it go at some point I'm happy yeah. Who is your? Yeah, who absolutely. Is the, as long as I'm involved. But without you, if they start putting some ads and, and weird stuff, but still it's gaining audience and still has 30% of the core, you know, like, uh, because I met some newspaper people, um, you know, and they are, they're very fast. They, they don't, they're like, they change things super, super quick, you know, digital yeah. and stuff. So, you know, so who is your ideal company that buys it or a person, you know, just like George Lucas sold to Disney, you know, I guess he didn't like them or something, but I think they're the only ones who can continue the project on a larger scale, even larger scale. Who would be your, your ideal um, buyer? I don't, I, I, I mean, ideally it would be like a company that is like already working into this space, but I feel like that even a bit, I mean, I've never been the person that says like, oh, that company is evil or this company is evil. As long as they are willing to put money into like a project uh, that has this kind of goal, um, I'm, I'm fine. Of course, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not gonna give it to a, like a cigarette company because in that case, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, it, it wouldn't work or any company that harm, uh, you know, animals or because I have my own set of, you know, values, uh, but I feel that any media company that will be interested in this project uh, and, uh, you know, of course, keep uh, the mission of this project like real 100% as it is right now, I'll be, I'll be absolutely interested. If they're just buying this company just to say, hey, we have this little thing and to clean our conscience, um, I'm, I'm not, of course, interested. Yeah, yeah. Well, I work with people that want to clean the conscious. So sometimes you don't know, you know, eventually you find out. And it's yeah. Really, you know, so because, yeah, yeah, I know, I know. But very, it's the risk. They're very good at talking. It's the risk yeah. of a business. You know, it's, it's, it's the yeah, risk yeah. of like a business. There are like so many startups uh, that, uh, you know, like sold to a bigger you know, tech giant, like, I don't know, Facebook. Uh, and after two years, you read the news that the they just laid off everybody and it just didn't work. So it's a risk uh, yeah. worth taking some time when you're like a businessman, you know, so. Yeah, cool. Um, do you have any questions for me? Uh, no, I, you, you look good. <laughs> I like the outfit. Fat. Fat. Yeah, <laughs> I, that's why you no. dress the same as me. <laughs> you look, you look I, it's, good. It's an I, excellent. I look forward to yeah. see you in uh, in LA as soon as these like you know pandemic fades out. Yeah. So and we'll yeah. be able to travel. I, I love LA. I know it's a beautiful yeah, I love city. LA. Thank, 
thank God this year before the quarantine, I already did two most important things I need to do, which is visit LA and visit Rome. You know, so those are the two things I've done. The only thing that's missing is visit Venezia. That's the only thing I need to visit. Otherwise, it's going to be a wasted year of life. I mean, I have the kids and everything, but I must visit Venezia. You know, Do you visit thing. Venezia every so, year or just once in a while? Every week. I, <laughs> no, as much as I can. I just like it. <laughs> every uh, Rome and, and Venice is, is a must. Yeah. yeah. I don't know, more often. Because I go to Veneto, I go to Andrea. You go, go to Vicenza, to right? You go to Vicenza very often. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, to every, everywhere. I used to go to Milan, to Verona, to Vicenza, to Treviso, everywhere, yeah. you know. I, it's, it's more, I'm very happy to work with companies there because they're close to Venice and I can go to Venice. <laughs> That's kind of the logic. You know, it was not that I go to Venice because the company is there. But ever since, I, I, as you know, I started in Milan and then I was lucky to, to work in Veneto and then I discovered this world of Veneto, which I like a lot. You know, good food, nice people, nice nature you know, uh, very creative, but they also want to build big stuff. Uh, they're not, they don't brag too much, you know, but they- Hard, hard the, working, you know, really yeah, creative. I agree. Hard working, creative people with a very international yeah, yeah. mindset, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're, they're su super undercover. You yeah. Know? I think whenever you talk around the world and you talk about Venice, they're like, what is that? They think it's a tourist uh, yeah. city, you know. And there is like a powerhouse of, and I tell, go around their house, say this, 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 this is all from, from that place. Yeah. You know, everything that you have more stuff from Veneto than from USA or Germany. Yeah. yeah. So it's crazy, this place. There's, you know, it's amazing. Um, anyway, thank you. And uh, I'm going to keep following, of course, the, the happy broadcast. I hope it reaches like another, I hope it reaches like 500 million. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, I think, I think it's, uh, that's, that's the goal. Why not? I mean, that's the goal, like, yeah, why not? I mean, that... like you were saying before, you know, it's like the goal of this project is to reach uh, as many users as possible. You know, it's not to be like a small, mm. uh, you know, like uh, artsy project uh, because, you know, the goal yeah, is yeah. to spread positivity. I mean, I can be the illustrator now tomorrow. Another person can be the illustrator, but, you know, the goal here is to become almost like an educational project that goes into schools. Uh, so the bigger the audience, uh, the more the goal will be reached. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the thing that I'm worried about, just one, I just remember one thing, the thing that I'm worried about is that the more I'm using, using media, you know, like my mobile, there are videos everywhere, you know? Yeah. So, and um, I'm just, you know, we are figuring out now how we can produce more and more and more videos. And, um, and uh, that's gonna, that's, that increases the amount of work you need to do. Yeah. You know, and it doesn't increase the message. The message is still there. It just makes it much more expensive to spread the same message. Yeah. And that's kind of something that I don't like, you know, because for example, you could have spread the message also with text and then images came over Instagram and now you have to make images. Yeah. And then now there is TikTok and, 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 you know, all this other stuff, which is just videos. Now I'm browsing through, if I open three, four different social media that where all the people are and it's all videos. You know, so I know, but uh, you know, that's a bit scary. How but you know, there are like, and I'm not saying that he's like the best or, but you know, Twitter is still like very, very, very successful, you know? So I feel like that yeah. when you talk about TikTok, when you talk about uh, somehow Instagram, uh, you know, you're talking about a v Snapchat, uh, you're talking about a very young uh, demo. So, but I guess that when mm -hmm. this demo, it's like, you know, you know, they move out of Snapchat and they go to Instagram, they move out of Instagram and they go to Facebook or like Twitter. So I feel like that if you're leaking the business of like um, information, being informed, uh, Twitter is like an amazing, you know, platform and most of it, I mean, yes, you have videos and now they're, you know, exploring, uh, you know, like formats like, you know, TikTok and stuff, but at the core of it is like, you know, a quick, uh, you know, um, a, a, a quick like phrase or like 180 characters that tells you like something like the happy broadcast, you know, it's like, that's it. You know, if you want to expand, uh, you click and read more, but I, we live in an age of information where you cannot be too, 
verbose. You know, you cannot like write uh, too much because people don't have the patience, especially on social media, to just stop and read. I just, I just realized who would be a perfect investor in the Happy Broadcast. You have, he, he's your neighbor. He's very close to you, Jack Black. Yeah. I mean, he's just I mean, perfect, you know. He's, and he, I think he wants to retire from acting. I mean, that's, I think, you should, you should give him a call now. Call him, like, yeah. it's, I, what is it? Seven, as soon as we hang up, uh, as soon as we hang up, I'm yeah, going to yeah. call Jack Black and say, like, hey, do you want yeah. to invest? Yeah. I feel like my, <laughs> my ideal investor will be Dwayne Johnson, The Rock. I mean... He, no. he is like in the, he is in the business of like making people happy and positive. So I, I love him. So, so it's Kevin Hart, but Dwayne, the rock is funny because there is Kevin Hart next to him or Jack Black, but Jack Black has that kind of like, he's, he's good yeah. with kids. He's good with everybody. You know, Kevin Hart is, is, is funny, but he's not for happy broadcast. You know? Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's a bit on the, it's great. Yeah, I would prefer, I mean. You know, I'll take, I'll take any of like them. It. Let's say, let's put it that way. <laughs> any of them will be a good investor. Uh, I'm not yeah, going to be yeah. too okay. fussy about uh, who's uh, the Hollywood star that is going to invest in the project. But yeah. yeah, we'll see. Okay. Okay, cool. Thank you very much, Mauro. Thank you. Ciao, ciao. Ciao. ciao.